And so this is technically not a conservation of energy question because um, there is friction. Uh, where is it? Slide along. Um, well, I guess uh, it doesn't explicitly there's a friction, except it make, makes a mention of the work of friction. Um, if it's frictionless, then it's zero. <laughs> so <laughs> just because the question asked it, uh, friction must not be zero. <laughs> um, and then, so, so yeah, it, uh, um, this is a good question to think through. And uh, the question kind of gives you an information at an intermediate point. And I have a feeling that's gonna be an important point. So let me draw that snapshot. So there's gonna be a point where the block is at point B and it will be moving at some speed of VB. Why did that, they tell us that? What I would have to guess is um, as this block slides down, so this block starts out from some height. It has some potential energy that's equal to mgh, h is given here, and, um, and zero kinetic energy. And I'm guessing the question, rather than asking, actually gave the speed here, because if you were to use conservation of energy, you wouldn't get the correct answer, or quote unquote correct answer here, because um, as the block slides down, there is going to be work being done by friction. So mechanical energy won't be conserved. Some of it will be taken out. And fortunately, the way the way question A is posed, the exact amount that's taken up, that's what A is looking for. So let's calculate that. So um, let's see, how should I set this up? Mm. I think the best starting place is this idea, which you have seen in the last lab, where the work done is equal to change of energy. So here, to be uh, clear, it's work done by friction we are talking about. So by change of energy, really what we are looking at is what is the total energy of the block at point B minus what was, wait, is that right? No, sure, I, I guess it's right. And what is the um, total energy of the block at point A? And this was why I was hesitating. When you calculate this, you'll find that this is less than zero, which kind of makes sense if the friction is doing negative work. What I'm not 100% sure is if uh, they are asking, looking for a negative or a positive work. I would just start with the negative and see where it goes. <laughs> okay, so I need to just write down the total energy at point B and total energy at point A. I believe I'm given enough information for this. So let me just write it out. So total energy at point B, that's gonna be, oh, so let me set this as reference where potential energy is equal to zero. So zero potential energy, everything is in kinetic energy. One half M VB squared. And here VB is a given quantity minus the total energy at point A which would be, um, wasn't initially moving, so just the potential energy, uh, mgh. All right, um, I guess uh, for this question, I kind of need to plug in numbers. So let me plug in numbers, um, no big deal. I, I, I can do that. <laughs> so, all right, one half times mass, I'm gonna do this in SI units. So 340 grams is 0 0.34 kilograms times VB, uh, 6.2 meter per second squared, 6.2 squared. All right, um, so 6.5348 is, is the, um, let me move this over. I'm putting it on my second screen so that it doesn't disappear. Um, all right, so the energy here is a 6.5348 
true. It's a bit a ridiculous number of significant figures, but I uh, don't want to get marked off. Uh, all right, MGH. So mass times the G times the height of the um, height of the ramp. So it's uh, let's see. Uh, 0 0.34 times 9.8 times h uh, 4. So 13.328 joule. 13.328 joule. Oh, and if you're taking difference here, I only need 6.535. Um, you know, significant figure rules. Um, all right, uh, so when you take the difference, what you end up with is um, 6.7, okay, 6.793 joule. Uh, it's a minus a 6.793 joule. And um, um, and that's the work done by friction along the curved surface. Um, just because this involves numbers, let me actually plug it in. Uh, do I have? Well, I guess I can do it here. Um, no, I hope it kept the same version of the question I had. Because um, uh, if it didn't, then. Um, See, is it still 340 grams, 6.2? All right, um, that seems right. Um, all right, let's, I guess, plug in the sensor. Uh, minus 6.793. Um, minus 6.793. Great. <laughs> okay. So, all right. And then it asks, uh, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction along the horizontal surface? That's a bit of an odd question to ask. Hmm. So, I guess uh, uh, this is where you kind of to use your intuitive problem solving, work forward, backward. So um, it's asking you for coefficient of kinetic friction. So you kind of do uh, a free association. <laughs> um, coefficient of kinetic friction is related to the kinetic friction force, which is given by coefficient times the normal force. Um, all right, so I guess I, do I need to know normal force? Um, well, I guess I do need to know normal force, but that alone doesn't tell me the coefficient because I actually need to know the friction force. Then I look at, okay, how do I figure out the friction force? Then I look back at the situation where I have a box that's moving at VB and eventually going, it's going to reach this position here with a zero velocity and frankly, zero potential energy because it's at the lowest height. So what I'm seeing is that from here to here, there's a change of energy. And the change of energy must be equal to the work done being by friction. Work being done by friction. So, uh, oh yeah, so friction is gonna do negative work again, uh, which is fine. And if I have work being done by friction, well, work is defined as the applied force, so kinetic friction force, times the displacement. And here, because the kinetic friction points this way, that points this way, that explains why uh, this work done would be negative, because delta x points that way, <laughs> 10 meters. So, all right, uh, I think I have all the pieces I need. It's a matter of kind of, just connecting them all together. So um, I know what the change of energy is uh, because it uh, has initial, th this is the energy that it has at point B. So uh, I can use that. So this thing here is equal to minus one half MVB squared. Um, and I know the left hand side is going to end up being, um, minus the friction force 
times, let me call this D uh, times D. So the minus sign is because they're in opposite directions. Um, so that gives me something I can solve for the friction force. Uh, and I guess this expression already has friction force. So I can just let right hand side equal left hand side. Um, so let's take a look at this. They both have minus sign, so let's cancel that. And solve it for friction. So friction force based on what's on the right hand side, or what's on the uh, right side of screen there. A uh, friction force is equal to um, one half mvb squared over d. All right, so we are saying that's equal to the friction coefficient times the normal force. Oh, I need to know the normal force. Um, I guess it's on a flat surface, no acceleration. So uh, it, a normal force, I think, is just going to be equal to mg. I mean, I could go through the standard strategy, but I've done this enough times to kind of know. <laughs> uh, oh, so wow, here's an interesting thing. Our mass cancels out. So let me move g over. That will give me this. The friction coefficient is equal to um, Vb squared over 2gd. And make sure that uh, your units cancel out. Uh, I think I can see that units cancel out. You can check it on your own. Uh, so let me plug in those numbers and let's see what we get. Um, Vb, that's a 6.2 squared divided by 2 times 9.8 times 10. I kept everything in SI units, so, well, and the units cancel out. Um, oops, that's not right. Let's say equal 0 0.196. It says two decimal places, but more decimal place never actually hurts. So 0 0.196. So this is equal to 0 0.196. Let's test it and see. Um, 0 0.196. All right, good. <laughs> so this is a kind of uh, standard, nice, clean question involving, uh, it, invo it, it does involve conservation of energy because um, the way we write down this equation here, it only makes sense if we have some expectation that absent work done by friction, the energy should be conserved. <laughs> That's kind of the subtext there. So this is, I, I, I do think of this as conservation of energy question rather than a work question. Um, and, uh, the, the way in which work comes in is that it's the mechanism by which mechanical energy is turned into something else. And you can use uh, relationships like what is the work done by friction force to uh, get at the friction force itself.